Yeah, okay, what I'm talking about is basically in the name, and Michel already mentioned that, so MLR3 pipelines is probably the most important uh, extension package for MLR3 at the moment, and it gives you a nice and very flexible way to create powerful machine learning graphs and pipelines. Yeah? And I should really mention that uh, most of the work that I'm presenting here is not um, of my own. Um, most of the program was done by Martin, uh, who's in the room here, Florian and also Michel. Yeah? Maybe you can also wave a little bit uh, and show yourselves. Um, we all know that um, in machine learning, it's not only about training models on data sets, it's about often very complex uh, chains of operations, so-called pipelines, so there's pre-processing in there. Feature extraction is usually where you get the good performance from, and there's ensembling methods like stacking. Aaron has uh, introduced all of that already. And um, that can give rise to a linear pipeline like this, where you, I don't know, you do some pre-processing, scaling, factor encoding, uh, maybe imputation. Now we have also had a talk about that yesterday, and then at the end there's usually a learning algorithm in there. So this would be a simple linear pipeline, and we all know that this you have to um, embed into cross-validation to um, perform proper evaluation at the end. And this is usually why this is difficult, because you can't globally, statically do this on one data set. Um, and you could do this with MLR2, uh, with wrappers, although the design there, I think, was debatable. It was a little bit awkward. Now, what we can do here in uh, MLR3 pipelines is you can go quite beyond that. You can construct actual graphs of operations. Uh, um, and um, you also get a very, very nice, flat, understandable structure yeah, that you can easily set up and work with. Yeah? So how does that work specifically? So we basically have two types of building blocks. So we have nodes and edges in a graph, and a node is uh, what we call a pipe operation, yeah? and that basically does the data transformation or the learning of the model. And then there's edges between these nodes, and on the edges, data and information flows. Yeah? And what we get at the end as a complete structure is such a graph. Yeah? with the pipe ops its nodes and the edges um, yeah, representing the data flow. So let me walk you through that um, a bit more slowly. How does that work in particular for the nodes? So the nodes are the single units of data operation. Yeah? So that's what we call a pipe op. And a pipe op, you can, I don't know, compare um, very much to a normal machine learning algorithm. So first of all, it's a data transformation operation. Yeah? Data goes in, it gets transformed, and data comes out. But because you kind of have to learn stuff yeah, during training and then apply this during prediction, there's two routes of operation. Yeah? The training route, data goes in, and you perform the operation, you transform the data, and data comes out. But while you're doing this, you're also learning something about this. Yeah? So you get basically learned parameters. That's what we call the state of the pipe op, and that's stored inside of the pipe op. And during prediction, you just apply that. Yeah? New data goes in. You now don't learn anything. You just apply your learned parameters um, you, in this instance, rescale your data with the learned uh, scaling factors, and data comes out. And this is the abstract structure behind any operation um, that we perform. Uh, there are um, often in MLR3 pipelines these linear uh, one input socket, one output socket types of operations, and these give then naturally rise to linear pipelines, but there's more complex meta stuff in there, like copying operators or feature unions, uh, path branching and so on, and some of these have multiple input sockets or multiple output sockets, and this is what gives rise at the end to potential graph structures. So some of them I will explain later in the um, examples that come uh, at the end of the talk. I think maybe for now the feature union is maybe the most simple to explain, so multiple data tables go in, they get joined, uh, and you have like a joint view, joint representation of your data uh, after uh, different types of feature extractions or pre-processing operations. Um, there's lots of stuff already implemented. I'm not going to read this out. So there's pre-processing operations, imputations, selection and filter operators, very important categorical uh, encoding operations, stuff for resampling and chunking and so on, ensembling. Yeah. And there's lots of more stuff to come. All of that is placed into dictionaries, and there will be at some point very soon a very, very long, well-documented list in our um, book online so you can read up what we have. Uh, we are still, at the moment, testing the underlying technical system, um, but this will grow very, very much during the next uh, months and weeks. So um, I've explained now how these pipe operators work. How can we now basically combine them yeah, to produce nice, interesting graphs? There's three very, very simple operations that you can do on these pipe operators and on graphs. So the first one is the pipe or concatenation operator. That's very simple. It takes two graphs, yeah, and it concats them together, yeah, so it joins the output um, with the input sockets, yeah, and you get a concatenated result graph. 
Second operation is even simpler, so it's the, the graph union operator. It takes two separate graphs, it does nothing with them, just joins them together into one complete graph. Yeah? And the third one is the dereplicate, that's just, I don't know, it's actually not very, it's really not needed. It's kind of a little helper function because very often you start from these similar building blocks and you want to replicate them n times. And this is what gReplicate does. It, it copies um, this uh, simple graph uh, into n copies of itself and joins them in a union uh, and you get a much larger graph. Uh, and I will see how this works in an example. I will show how this works in an example very, very soon. Um, a few words on, hey, are graphs learning algorithms? Where are learning algorithms and graphs? So first of all, of course, a normal MLR3 learning algorithm, I don't know, like a random forest or logistic regression that does, of course, can be represented as a pipe operator. So there's a pipe op learner. And this usually, uh, I don't know, lives somewhere at the end of um, the pipeline or the graph. Yeah? And that does normal training and prediction, as you know this, um, from normal machine learning algorithms. But what you can also do is you can kind of wrap the whole graph into a graph learner. Yeah? So this just wraps it into an R6 class. Um, it allows you to treat this as a normal MLR3 learning algorithm. And that means you can now use all of the functions that Michel has uh, shown before um, that live in MLR3. So you can cross-validate the whole thing. You can tune the whole thing. You can do nested resampling. You can benchmark this. Yeah? This feels like a normal learning algorithm with just more complex steps in before. So you can just endow your learning algorithm with extra operations. And this, I think, is much more understandable than wrapping stuff around other stuff yeah? in onion layers. This is a flat, easily understandable structure. Um, here's our first example. So our linear pipeline that I started out with, yeah? you do some scaling, you do some factor encoding, some imputation, and then you do uh, just a normal um, decision tree at the end. Yeah? And this is just <coughs> operators, you pipe them together, you conquer them, and you get the linear pipeline. Um, so very easy to understand. Um, we are, if you think this is a little bit verbose, we do think that too. Yeah? So this um, accesses our pipe operator dictionary here, and then concats the R6 objects. We are working on a shorthand notation for this, so there's like a, I don't know, preliminary uh, version of that um, already, I think, on GitHub that Martin worked on, I think, for the last two days. So you can just use string notation here if you don't want to change hyperparameters. And even for changing hyperparameters, we are currently working on a shorthand notation, but this is not finished. I guess this will come out in the next uh, couple of weeks. Yeah? We will want to play around with this a little bit to get this right. Um, how does training and predicting, predicting work for a graph or for a pipeline? Well, that's also very easy to understand. Training data goes in during training. Um, you call the training operation of each pipe operator yeah, that gives rise to the states. Data gets transformed along the way, and you learn, 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 learn. And at the end, you have all of the learned parameters and learned states available in your graph. And maybe also some outcome here, depending on what happens at the end. And during prediction, you pipe your data through that pipeline. You just apply all of these. Uh, operators, again, you don't learn anything anymore, you just transform data, and if there's a learning algorithm at the end, as it usually is, um, that gives rise to a prediction. Um, you can also easily access um, all of the various, I don't know, um, states, member variables of these pipe operators. I think the most important ones we have put here on that slide. So there's, uh, of course, hyperparameters. Each, hyper, each pipe op has a set of parameters that you can set, and as the whole graph basically feels like a list. You just um, access the list here with the ID of the pipe operator, and then you can access all of the member variables. So in this instance here, we are setting um, a certain hyperparameters to a certain value. You can also query that very easy. You can also, of course, retrieve the state. So maybe you want to just figure out what rotation matrix the PCA operator has learned. Yeah? So you access the state, you print it out, you look at it, or you do something with it. And uh, for debugging, also I think pretty uh, important, you can also uh, access intermediate results. So the intermediate transformed uh, output data um, of the pipe op, you can also access, reach into the list, access the dot result slot, and you can look at that. I think that's important if you're setting up stuff for the first time and want to debug with this a bit. We don't store this for memory reasons uh, during normal execution, but you just set a flag and then you can do that. Um, some examples on nonlinear pipelines. Uh, so these are now a little bit more complex and showcase what you can do with this. So, I mean, Aaron, for example, has talked about different packages for um, stacking and ensembling and so on. Basically, I think we are not even sure whether we're going to implement those because you can just write them down in a few lines of code yourself. Yeah? I guess there will be some, I mean, small abbreviation functions, but you can just pipeline this yourself. So this is very flexible. Let me show this to you. 
maybe you want to set up a bagging model, yeah? so bag trees. So you set up a little pipeline which does sub something first and then does a decision tree, so you set it up here. And then you just copy this three times, or I don't know, maybe 100 times in a, a true ensemble, and then you do majority voting at the end, and this is your bagged tree ensemble. Yeah? And with shorthand notation, I think this fits on one or two um, lines of code. Um, and if you train this, this is how this looks in the graph. Yeah, we sweep through the graph. Actually, we do this more, uh, not really in sequential here, but um, there's kind of a topological sorting of the graph going on yeah, where you kind of um, train the currently active nodes, uh, so the fronts, so to speak, in topological sorting. Um, or an even more complex example, stacking, even with uh, included original features. So we set up a linear model here. We set up an SVM. We have a certain null operator, so the null operator just passes the data through, then you do a feature union. So, and oh, what I also should say, we are not really using the normal uh, pipe op learner here, we are using a cross-validation learner, so, or cross-validation pipe operator. So this cross-validates the learner and it outputs the cross-validated predictions. And the same for the SVM and this passes through the original features. And then we do a stacking random forest on this, with, which can actually combine not only the um, original uh, underlying base learners in a weighted fashion, but you can even do this depending on feature values, so different kinds of stacking models uh, locally in, in input space. Huh? And yeah, this is a little bit verbose with maybe eight or nine, uh, ten lines of code with shorthand notation, this should be even smaller. Uh, but this is very, very easy to write and set up and understand, and you can access and change all of these operations here. Um, something even more complex, you can also do branching, so you can actually execute only several alternative paths, so maybe you have different ways of pre-processing, but you're not sure which of these actually works best. Very normal in ML and data science, right? Maybe you're doing something like a PCA or an ICA, and then you can put branching opera a branching operator in front of that, and the branching operator basically has a little hyperparameter that selects that either that path or that path or that path gets taken, yeah? and then data flows only along that path, and we basically pass a null or knob object on the other path, so nothing happens there, and at the end we just join everything together again. And this you can now not only configure, you can tune this, right? So you can basically have the AutoML tuning Bayesian optimization system figure out which of these paths leads to the best result at the end. Um, I have also a slide on parameter tuning. I guess I will skip that because Michel has already shown that. And it doesn't work any different to what you do in normal tuning MLR3. Yeah, you specify your parameter set. You uh, run your tuner on this, in this case, random search. Um, Stuff like Bayesian optimization and hyperband will follow very soon. We do lots of research on this too. Yeah? And, and we have packages for them for that available for the old MLR2 version and will now transform them also for MLR3. Um, okay, I guess I'm surprisingly fast. So that's already kind of my last slide. So what will we work on next? Okay, we'll test the thing a bit more. Um, please get back to us if you have criticisms, if you figure out bugs here, yeah, if you want to see certain features, I want to discuss the design a bit. I think this is the perfect uh, point in time to do this together with apps on GitHub. Yeah? And we'll obviously implement many more pipe operators, maybe also stuff from recipes and so on. And there's also um, automatic type checking when you construct graphs. So MLR3 tells you a little bit whether you are constructing unreasonable pipelines. Yeah, So there's like type checking going on. Um, and there are um, two versions, I think, at the moment for interactive uh, plots, so you can have a look at how the, the, the graph looks like. And you can, of course, it's already well documented how you can, and I think that's very important, how you can implement your own pipe operator. So if you want to do custom feature extraction, that's definitely possible. What we also want to do is we want to have more complex tasks. Yeah? So think about curves, functional data, and columns, and then do custom feature extraction. Yeah? This will definitely be possible. I think that's already nearly possible with the current structure. Yeah? We are going to work on a couple of more technical stuff, so like caching, yeah, so that, that you don't have to recompute operations again and again, especially in parameter tuning, and better or parallel execution, parallel training of the graph that's at the moment not implemented, so all of the operations of MLR3 are parallelizable, but the graph is at the moment trained sequentially. I guess I'm, I'm on time and finished here. If you have questions, please either talk to us now for three minutes or Afterwards, during the coffee break, we'll be here actually until Tuesday yeah, for a little MLR3 workshop. Thank you. Questions? Oh, also, there's a bit.ly link. I haven't shown this uh, long enough, so you can download both slide sets from there, okay? Sorry.
I missed that. Thank you.